Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're going to do a full playthrough of Blitzkrieg. Um, I've already done a video unboxing, I did a video tutorial of the solitaire mode, and now I'm going to do a full playthrough. Um, usually with the full playthroughs, I'll kind of describe what I'm doing, kind of how the rules work, but it is not a teaching playthrough. Um, I'm just kind of playing through and you guys can go along with me. So um, I have it mostly set up right now. Me, the allied versus the axis uh, run by the bot. Um, the only thing I haven't done yet is I haven't moved the theaters, advanced them along on the battle track. So we're going to play, let's see, we're going to play easy difficulty. I know, make fun of me in the comments. Um, so what I do is, uh, uh, let's see, it's me easy, I roll three times. Um, roll a d6 and then advance different regions. One each. So African Middle East, so moves one in the Axis favor. Five, Southeast Asia, moves one in the Axis favor. Six is my choice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move them Pacific Ocean one over. All right. Now we go ahead and we're ready to begin. So for the Axis, we're gonna go ahead and start off with them. Draw a stratagem. Axis always goes first. I have the shield, which is I think, okay, for the glory. Prioritize highest VP campaign, then theaters with, high, with VP spaces. Okay, let's see which uh, theater they're gonna go to. It's going to be African Middle East here. So you can see that campaign has three VP, which is the highest of any of the opening campaigns. Um, position filter prioritize VP spaces, which is going to be that one right there. All right. Go ahead. Which unit they're going to place? There is no unit filter for For the Glory. I suppose I could show you guys, at least show you the... So I'm not going to show them necessarily each time, but For the Glory is the stratagem I drew. So theater filter, position filter, no unit filter whatsoever. So we'll use the regular flow chart, which is I printed off separately. It's also on the back of this rule book here, um, back of the solitaire rule book. And in this case, the way the game is right now, it's gonna be randomized between their five here. So one through five, six I'll reroll. One, two, three. So this aircraft here. I should have pointed out, I suppose that it's, uh, I could see it's either land or water, so I knew it would be any of the units, so. All right. So for the battle space, it was one victory point. Let's go ahead and put them on the board. They're on the board with one. And then a unit with one moves a, a cube over one for the access. All right. Go ahead and slide their guys over, drop them their bag. And then set it on the end. All right, placement aircraft for them. All right, on to my turn. Hmm. I didn't get, I didn't draw too well. I only have all ones to start off with. That's not that good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna do place this naval in Western Europe, uh, industrial production. So place him there. Industrial production allows me to draw a token. All right, two aircraft. And then I'll enact the one and move over on Western Europe towards my control now. And now at the end of my turn, draw another token. All right, lots of aircraft right now. Now the AI, axis turn. Oops, that should went back in there. Try to jump, put that old one back in there. All right, the new one is economic warfare. Theater filter, prioritize theaters with industrial production and or bombing spaces. Which is gonna be Pacific Ocean, Eastern Europe, and that's it. Yep, Pacific Ocean or Eastern Europe. Um, let's see, there's me. highest VP. Um, I think I lost what I'm looking at. Okay, prioritize theaters with industrial production and or bombing spaces. So. So we have one of these two right here. Select the theater. Um, we have two theaters tied. So most empty spaces in open campaign. Again, they're also tied. They both have two. Highest VP for the current campaign. They both have two. And then the tiebreaker is top over bottom. So we're gonna, they're gonna go to Eastern Europe. And for the position, he wanted the um, in, either industrial or bombing. Well, there's no bombing space. Who's gonna go to the industrial? And it's gonna be with a land one land unit so obviously the aircraft 
or the tank. One, two, three, four, five, six. Randomize which one. So, aircraft here. So now they gain, since it was uh, the industrial production battle space, they draw a unit token from the bag, add it to the reserve. Whoa, three tank, so good for them. Not good for me, but good for them. We get an act the one on the aircraft, so it pushes Eastern Europe over in their favor by one. And then the end of the turn, we draw for them a tank. All right. My turn. Hmm. Well, let's see. I could start working against them. Um, you know what? Actually, that's not a bad idea, I suppose. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use my two aircraft. I'm going to place him in the plus one tactical advantage space over here. So tactical is move over. So it's plus one. So I'm going to go to a tie and then plus two moves over to in my favor. And now I closed out the campaign. So I get two victory points and there's no, I'm not going to reach any of the spots here. So those don't work or anything, but I do get the two victory points. So I'm on the board now with two. Not bad. Now I go ahead and my turn, draw my Replacement token. All right, a one tank. All right, on to the box turn. Drew. So over their stratagem, this time they got the um, big guns. Unit filter, ignore non-special units. Okay, otherwise it only going to cause a big greatest change. So basically, with that one, they're looking to use like the strongest unit for the most part. So there's no campaign, no theater or campaign filter with that stratagem token. It's just basically about the unit. They wanted to use the biggest unit. So go ahead and do the normal procedure for selecting a theater. Um, is there any you can close and win? No. Any campaign you can close and win? No. Um, stratagem filter is applied. Multiple theaters tied in most empty spaces. Let's see. Looks like... Tied a bunch of ties here. Three, three, and three. So any of these over here. Um, highest VP, three, three, two. So it'd be either between these two. And then top over bottom. So Eastern Europe. So they're going to go to Eastern Europe. Uh, for position, let's see. Position is uh, legal place. Okay, any of them, basically. Uh, close the theater, doesn't, nope, won't work. Charging filter doesn't apply. Multiple positions are tied. Propaganda, if the AI bot has 20 or more VP, does not apply. Um, we're looking at these right here. Strategic advantage, nope. Uh, propaganda, if a player leads by three or more, I do not. Um, industrial production, nope. Research, boom, right here. It's actually a two also. So it's gonna be the research position here. And then looking at their units, it's gonna be a land unit. And he wants the one with the greatest change which basically says, oh, I don't know if it currently applies. Um, it's going to be the three here because that's going to be the uh, largest. So, the strongest, I should say. So, it's a research two. So, they get the axis gets two random tokens. Add them to their, their bag. Shake it up a little bit. Now, we go ahead and three on the tank. So, one, two, three. So, it's back to in their favor now. Man, it's like a fight over Eastern Europe, huh? All right, it's the end of their turn. Go ahead and draw up from their bag. Three naval unit, wow, geez, I'm getting lucky. All right, my turn. Hmm. Well, I still, I don't wanna lose out on Eastern Europe. I feel like it just the problem is I don't have a very strong, there's really no way with my units right now, there's no reason to go there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Western Europe um, I'm going to do the plane here in the research spot. So research, so I get to draw a token and add it to my bag. In there. And one strength, so goes over one. Not bad. Again, I'm kind of limited now because my units are not very good right now. So, all right, draw from my bag, draw back up, add to my reserve. All right, naval, two naval unit, not bad. Right, let's go to the AI. What are they gonna do? Little parachute guy, also called rapid deployment. Unit filter, choose a left most valid unit. That's an easy one to find. All right, so let's do the select theater. Theater can close and win. Uh, none yet. Campaign, it can close and win. 
None yet. Nope. Um, it would be able to close this campaign up here in Western Europe, but it would need one, two, three, a unit with three strength. And we know it's gonna place the leftmost unit. So it's either gonna be this one or this one, depending on depending on what, you know, if it's land or sea. Um, it's, that's land or sea, it's either one. But the leftmost would be this one tank, which would not win it. So that's why we know that's not gonna play that one. Um, let's see, dredge and filters and apply, multiple theaters hide most empty spaces. Three, it's gonna be one of these two. Um, Highest VP, three and two. Okay, so it's gonna go in Africa and Middle East. Now we go ahead and select a position. Propaganda. Well, it's not there anyway. Um, strategic advantage right here, the three. So it's gonna pick strategic advantage. And for the unit, leftmost valid, which is gonna be this tank here. Boom. So strategic advantage of three. Now when the AI, it has a little list here, it'll tell you, note on effects, if AI plays on a strategic advantage, execute the modifier would cause the greatest change. And I say, what's the greatest change? Well, I have a little chart for that. Uh, greatest change, one that turns up, and you, you go down it, so first one, one that turns a player lead over a theater into an AI bot lead. And now remember, strategic advantage, he gets to move at three. He gets to move any of the battle uh, markers, three spots in the battle track. And the number one change would be, turns a player lead into an AI bot lead, which right now the only one I'm leading in is Western Europe and he gets to move it three. So he's gonna do that, one, two, three. Boom, Western Europe went from my control to his control. Bummer, bummer for me. All right, go ahead and put him back there. And one, so he increases his lead in Africa Middle East by the one there. So, ouch. I even lost Western Europe. I think every theater is under Axis control right now. Not good, not good guys. All right, let's go ahead and draw back up for them, for their reserve. Yep, so that was one of their special units, the research ones, you can see the yellow token here, just an extra strong land unit for strength, uh, very powerful. So, all right, my turn. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get some more victory points here, but also I wanna maximize what I can do. Ooh, what should I do? You know what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play my naval unit two, that's what I'm gonna do. In Western Europe, two strength naval unit, I'm gonna play it on the propaganda spot. Propaganda, the one, that's one VP, so I'm actually gain one victory point, so go up to three. I now have three, Axis has one. And then my two, move the token over to two, or the cube, excuse me, on the battle tracks, so and now it's back in my control. I close out the campaign and I gain two victory points, and since I'm in control of it, the theater, I get the two victory points. So one, two, so now I'm up to five. Not bad, a little bit of a short turn type thing. So we'll see if it backfires or not, but hopefully it doesn't. Um, yeah, that's what I'll do, okay. All right, draw from my bag, draw back up to add my reserve. All right, two, two tank, two uh, land unit, or army, I guess it's called in the game. You know what it is, you can tell. All right, AI's turn. All right, a little shield guy, which is for the glory, I believe. Yep, theater filter, prior to his highest VP campaign, um, which is gonna be, right now, it's one of these two right here. Um, okay, yeah, highest, uh, so it's one of those two, so how to break a tie, uh, most, most empty spaces, they both have two, highest VP for current campaign, well, they're the same with three, top over bottom, so Eastern Europe, it's gonna continue at Eastern Europe. Um, for the glory, Theaters with VP spaces, so he's gonna focus on, obviously there, um, the position he's gonna go for the propaganda with the victor point there. Um, which unit? It's gonna be whatever unit is valid at this point, which is gonna be one, two, three. So it's only these three, because he has three naval units. So one of these three. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, so he's gonna play that four tank there. Wow. All right, so he gets one victory point for the propaganda spot. And he gets four. One, two, three, four. Over here. Ooh, yikes. All right. And that four tank. Yikes. All right. Let's go ahead and draw back up for them. All right, my turn. I'm doing so hot in some of these places, man. I'm trying to think of where else to go. 
think of souls I could just do something like yeah I just need to get some more higher value units out there I think so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my one tank here on the industrial production over here in Western Europe so industrial production remember I get to add a uh, add another unit to my reserve Ooh, a three naval there we go now we're talking and then I'm gonna go ahead and it's a one tank so move the battles track over one and then the end of my turn so draw up and I get an army there or excuse me a general I was an army is a general it counts as an army all right let's see what the AI is gonna do here all right so economic warfare theater filled approach theaters with industrial production and or bombing spaces so here here and then that's it. Yep, so Western Europe or Pacific Ocean. Um, well, actually, my bad. Uh, I'm gonna skip here. Uh, you start off with, so before you do this, before you look at the stratagem, and hopefully, I don't think I've made a mistake before this game. Um, hope not. Ugh. Anyway, so you actually look at a theater can close and win, which nowhere yet. Okay, fair enough. You know, can't close any of the theaters yet, but a campaign it can close and win, which if you look at the board, boom, right here, clearly it can close and win that one. So it's gonna be that um, that campaign. The for the position doesn't really apply because it's gonna put it's gonna want to put a unit right here to, to close it and win it. Um, as for a unit, let's see, what are we at? What are unit? No I cannot use the greatest change. Not cause the greatest change. Oh no, that's not the one. Um, Okay, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply for this because it's going just for position. So it's going to be whatever unit is available, which is his land or sea. So it could be literally any of these guys. There's six of them. So roll a 1d6. A six. It's going to be this one naval unit. So the track up one. And now he closes out this campaign and he wins it. So he gets three VPs plus one for the track. You can see there's a one VP there. So four. One, two, three, four. Man, brutal. All right. I was gonna draw up. Computer or computer, the AI here is kind of running away with it. Hmm. At least I feel like they're in a better position. Although they're only winning by one victory point, so it's not over yet. All right, let's go ahead and do. We're gonna do this two army. No, let's do. Trying to, okay. I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out what to do here because I feel like I'm getting my butt kicked a little bit. So let's go ahead and do this two land over here, two on the bombing spot in Western Europe. Um, yep, so bombing is gonna remove one of his units from his reserve and put it back in his bag. There's six of them. Five. So it's this one, two, three, four, five. So it's that three naval unit. Yeah. Now we're talking. So he goes back in the bag here. All right. And then I get my plus two, one, two for the two land unit. All right. Push me up. Well, at least in Western Europe, hopefully I'll win there at least. So, all right. And there you obviously don't get any unit back. I get to top off my forces here. All right. Here we go. A three aircraft. That was my uh, one from the research before. Cool. All right, onto the AI turn. Rapid deployment, unit filter, choose the leftmost valid unit. So let's go ahead and start at the top on the theater. Theater can close and win, none yet. Campaign can close and win, none yet. Um, this one could be closed, but they wouldn't win it, so they're not gonna go there. Um, stratagem filter doesn't apply because it's for leftmost unit. So most theaters are tied. Most, most empty spaces in open campaign. <laughs> Clearly, it's going to be Eastern Europe here. A whole bunch of space is also worth the most points. Um, so is it going to go there? Position there. It's going to be propaganda. No. Strategic advantage. Yep. So it's going to go to strategic advantage. Leftmost valid. So it's going to be this one aircraft. And it's going to go to strategic advantage. Three. And what he's going to do is cause the greatest change. Remember? If you remember. This looks for greatest change. One that turns a player lead over theater into an AI bot lead. The only one I'm going to lead in is in Western Europe, but that even the three from there, one, two, three, does not change the lead. So you go down the list. One that turns a tie over theater into an AI bot lead. There are no ties. 
Uh, one that turns a player lead over theater into a tie. Nope. And then one that increases a more extreme AI bot lead, which the biggest lead they have is in Eastern Europe. However, he can't do that um, because you can't do a strategic advantage in the same theater you selected. It has to be a different theater. So the next thing would be one that decreases a more extreme player lead. Okay, Western Europe, that's where he can do it. So his strategic advantage, the three plus minus three is going to be in Western Europe. So one, two, three, back towards the middle. Then you go ahead and I'm going to put him there, and he moves over by one. All right. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Good drop for them. Oh, another special unit there. Aircraft carrier with the bomber. All right. Man, the game is kind of running away from me a little bit. Um, maybe what I'll do is... Pacific Ocean, I'm use my three um, aircraft over here in the Pacific. No. Actually, I don't want to do. I'm going to do it. Yep, I'm going to do it. Um, over in the Pacific, just like I said. Um, I'm going to do the research spot. So three on the research. So research, I get to draw a random one to look at it. Okay, a one with a bomber. So, all right. Kind of gave up a better one, I would say, but whatever, that's okay. And then three, one, two, three. So I'll start moving over here. So at least I'm going to start moving things over um, here for me. So get to start making some gains somewhere else here. So, all right, let's go ahead and top off from my bag. All right, a one naval unit. And then on to the AI's turn. The old big guns. Remember, this is the one where there'll be a unit causes the biggest change. So generally the most powerful unit. Um, theater can close and win. None yet. Campaign, it can close and win. None yet. Um, Trajan filter doesn't apply because it's a big gun. So just looking for the strongest unit. Uh, most empty space is an open campaign. Uh, it's going to be a tie between Eastern Europe and oh no pacific ocean does There's still one there so it's gonna, still going to be eastern europe so it's going to go to eastern europe um position will be propaganda no strategic advantage already did it um propaganda if the player leads no industrial production is there industrial production there nope uh research no research there bombing okay bombing so he's going to go to the bombing um it's a land space so it's going to be one of these two and it's gonna be the most powerful one remember the greatest change uh, stratagem filter, big guns. So he's going to play the aircraft with a two on the bombing. Um, we enact the bombing, which gets rid of one of these guys. I have five, so go ahead and one through five, and then reroll sixes. One, two, three. Oh no! You got the three. My three naval unit, my most powerful naval unit. I had plans for him next turn. I'm gonna play him on Pacific Ocean. He knew it. All right, so um, discarded him. Now the two, so you'll go over one, two. I'm gonna go ahead and draw back up out of their out of their bag for their reserves. Okay. All right, over to my turn. Hmm. So what can I do? Besides keep getting my butt kicked. Um I suppose I can do uh, try to do some of the research ones maybe over there and Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna go naval unit over here in Africa and the Middle East on the research, so I can try to get an extra, let's see what's a good one. There, whoa, that is a good one. All right, awesome. So a good one there. Um, and my plus one still pushes over just a little bit, a little bit closer to me, so we'll see. I'll shake up my bag, draw from there. What do we got here? What do we got here? Three. Oh, I got him back. I got my three naval unit back. All right. Next turn. I got plans for him. I got plans for him. All right. AI bot. For the glory. Theater filter. Prior to his highest VP campaign, which is definitely going to be um, Eastern Europe. And then position. Prior to his VP place, spaces, which is right here. Um, no, no unit filter. So it's gonna he's going to place there. But it's going to be whoever's eligible. Um, 
which is going to be, what is it? That's a land unit, so one of these two. So uh, let's roll for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, five. So it'll be um, his general here. Two for VP, so he gains one, two, because it's a propaganda space. And then one plus if he had any more armies there, which he only played one army, so it's a total. I played, um, that's his also, right? Yeah. So one, two, three. So total of plus three. So one, two, three. Wow. Okay then. Let's go ahead and top him off uh, here. Two aircraft. All right, my turn. So with this three naval, I'm gonna play him in the Pacific. He's going to do a bombing mission, so one of their five. So one through five, and then a six is reroll. So this one goes back in their bag. All right, and then I gain three. One, two, three. And I close out the campaign, which is two. Plus, I had I reached the one VP spot, so I had three, so I had a total of three. One, two, three. All right, here we go. We're tied right now. It doesn't really look like it on the rest of the board, but somehow we're tied for victory points. We'll see how long that lasts. All right, go ahead and draw up my reserves. A two tank. All right, ready to roll. All right, let's see what they do here. Big guns again, going for the big boy. All right, so let's see. Where are they going to go, though? Theater can close and win. Um... Yeah, it's going to be um, Eastern Europe. They can close and win because they only need two, and they have that. So, um, yeah, it's it's going to be Eastern Europe here. So, um, it's going to pick Eastern Europe. Um, I'm going to pick um, the t uh, tactical advantage position, and it's going to be since big guns are going to use their biggest unit, which the biggest land unit is right here. Actually, I guess it'd be the air unit here. So two. Plus two, puts them in here, which is an automatic win for the close, well, automatic close of the theater. Then they get to enact this last space. Plus two, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. And then there's nothing there. Normally, when you close out a campaign, excuse me, close out a theater, any spaces left over, you get to um, basically use their effects, use their battle space. There's a blank one, clearly, no, nothing happens. But they're going to get six, seven, eight, nine victory points from that alone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they're at 17 victory points. I like to put that down there as kind of a reminder that that theater is now closed. So Eastern Europe is now closed. All right, then. You know, I was whomping the AI, kicking their butt every game, and then I, I film a whole game and suddenly I can't win. Well, you know, we had, I suppose, but it's not looking too good for the allies here, folks. All right. Let's see what we can do. It's not over yet, right? All right. Um, doo -doo -doo. let's do any more points, any more points. What can we do? Um, I'm gonna do this naval, I'm gonna do it at the research spot here to research. So I'm gonna get two tokens. So I get a nuke, all right, and a tank and a Blitzkrieg tank. Very nice, actually. And then plus one for the naval, so it pushes them over here. Up. And then draw my one, add my reserve. Oh, I was hoping it'd be the nuke. All right, or at least the um, blitz tank. All right, what do we got here? What am I thinking? Um, okay, so it's my turn. All right, so we'll go to AI turn here. So research, uh, research and development, prioritize theaters with research spaces. Which right now there are none available, so that will not matter. Um, but okay, theater can close and win. It, uh, no, theater can close and win. Campaign can close and win. So always jump ahead of the strategy. My apologies. It's, they're going to go here because African Middle East they can close by putting a, a unit here. Um, there is no unit filter. Non research space was selected. Ignore non special weapon units if possible. So it's going to be it's a water. So it has to, basically it has to be this one. So it's going to play this naval unit here in Africa and Middle East. So you're going to play it there. They get a plus one because it's a tactical spot. Plus two for that. One, two. And then close out this campaign, which is three, four VPs. 
one, two, three, four. So they're at 21. I'm at eight. They're at 21. Wow. All right. Go ahead and draw up. Draw up for them. One naval unit. Small blessing. My turn. Let's do... Hmm. I have to do... Let's do this two aircraft over in industrial production here. Over in the Pacific Ocean. So, industrial production. Remember, I get to draw token add to my reserve. Oh, man, bummer. That's a terrible one to draw. Um, and then the two. Move them over two. And at the end of my turn, I get to draw up again. One. What the heck? All right. Um, AI's turn. The writing's on the wall on this one, folks. All right. Big guns. So, they're going to use their most powerful one, which if they can, is going to be this guy here. It's aircraft carrier. Um, let's see. Theater can close and win. Nope, none yet. Um, actually, yeah, no. A campaign, it can close and win. So, believe it or not, there is one. Doesn't seem like there should be, but Western Europe, even though I, I have all of the spaces here because they use their strategic advantage to knock me back down um, once or twice, I think twice, means that they can actually close and win this. So, what they're going to do is they're going to play in that position. They're going to play their aircraft carrier with bombing. Place him here, which gives, well, it gives them two. One, two. And then I get to bomb. So, they're going to bomb one of my guys here. So, there's five of them. One through five. Six is a reroll. So, this tank goes back in the bag. And then, he closes out that campaign. And it's now on their side. So, they get the three victory points for that. One, two, three. So, that 24. They're one VP away from winning. Over, drop out of their reserve. Three, not bad. Now my turn. See, I'm doomed either way, but at least maybe I can get a couple more points maybe or something. Um, what can I do here? So let's do, I'll do this two. Yeah, I, man, I got nothing here. This is terrible. Um, Really bad, actually. Go ahead. I'm going to play this this general. I'm going to play him Western Europe here. Um, on this space has both, or has, you know, either or, um, depending on what you put there, which I'm putting a land unit, so it's going to be the research. So I get to draw one of these. I get a four navy, which is very strong. Um, and then he's a land He's a general, so you had one, two, three, and just that's it, three. So one, two, three. So back over to my side. All right, now I'll draw off my bag. One aircraft. That's gonna be a big help. Um, AI bot turn. Oh, that's the uh, steamroll, which performed the same strategy as last turn, so it's gonna be the big guns. I'm just gonna pick three land unit if he can. Um, first, we'll look at a theater he can close and win. Uh, none yet. A campaign he can close and win. Um, nope, doesn't look like there's anything there yet. So, uh, treasure and filter doesn't apply. Multiple theaters are tied in most empty spaces, which would be one of these two. Here's Southeast Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Highest VP for Kirk campaign. Definitely Africa and the Middle East, so it's going to be placed in... Uh, Africa in the Middle East theater. Um, select a position, legally place a unit, close and win it. Nope. Um, filter doesn't apply. Propaganda. If AI bot has, nope, doesn't apply. Um, strategic advantage. Nope. Propaganda if the player leads. <laughs> nope. Definitely not that one. Industrial production. If the AI has four or less units, which I do have four, so he's going to go to uh, industrial production right here. So he gets a two, so it's going to be a naval unit. Can only place a naval unit there because that's all he has. So get two industrial production. So he's gonna get to draw two tokens. All right. And then what was it? A one. Yep, a one naval. So it moves over one. And then go ahead and draw again to fill up for his reserve. At the end of his turn. All right. So I'm still alive. Still hanging on here. All right, my turn. Let's go ahead and do um, Pacific Ocean. I'm going to place the land unit. Actually, I should do is 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do. If there's a strategic advantage up here in Western Europe, um, plus three. And I'm gonna pick Pacific Ocean. One, two, three. And I'm gonna score my two. One, two. All right, yep. Trying to see if I can get Western Europe and Pacific Ocean at least over far enough to get some points. Oh, there we go. Ready to use that guy next turn. All right, yeah, I bought. Pick a good one, pick a good one. All right, research and development. Uh, theater, prioritize theaters with research spaces. None available at the moment, so he's gonna ignore that. All right, a theater can close in a win. Nope. Um, yeah, nothing can close and win. Nope. Okay, I was thinking it was close on Western Europe, but not strong enough to do that. So, campaign, it can close and win. Nothing at the moment. Um, Stratagem filter doesn't apply. Motor theater size, most empty space is an open campaign, which is going to be three. So, it's going to go to Southeast Asia. Um, where's it going to go? Propaganda. If Abbott has 20 or more, he has 24. So, he's going to go there. It's water. This naval unit. And they're going to win with that one. So we're going to go to the propaganda space. He gains plus two. One, two. I'm at 26. Then the three for the naval. One, two, three. That's it. End of turn. Draw up. Turn ends. They're at 25 or more. They're at 26. Axis win. Change of history. Terrible. Terrible game. I hate it. Okay. All right. So this is actually my first time losing. I'll be honest. Normally when I play on easy, I don't expect to lose. But um, you guys get to see the uh, see the game in action. So hopefully you enjoyed yourselves. You enjoyed watching it. Um, trying to check the uh, time here. What are we at? What are we at here? 36 minutes. So is it World War II in 20 minutes? Eh, I mean, if you're flying through it, if you're flying, sure. I think it's more like World War II in 30 minutes. Maybe that wasn't as catchy not to have that on the box. I don't really know. But I'll tell you. So, Blitzkrieg, um, I enjoy it. It is a lot of fun in a really small package, really quick playing game. Um, there are games I play, some of my war games, where 36 minutes is one turn or is half a turn. I mean, I have a game that I play uh, have, it has hour-long turns, basically. That's about how long it takes. It's not that it is an hour long. It's that it takes me an hour to play. This one clearly plays a lot faster than that. So I was able to play the complete World War II, sort of. Um, so some more pros of the game besides being fast playing, it is a lot of fun. It's just pure and simple. It's fun. Um, the strategy of picking and choosing where you're going to go of trying to, of trying to decide, Hey, do I, do I kind of build up my theaters? Like I was trying to build up Western Europe and Pacific ocean, or do I focus on their theaters and try to knock them down? Do I balance? What, what do I do? What do I have available land, sea, air, you know, special do I, build up priority, uh, excuse me, do I build up research? So draw, you know, these special tokens and add them in my bag, knowing that temporarily it doesn't help me, but in future turns, as I'm drawing them, I know it's going to help me more. Um, so you're balancing that immediate gain, long-term need type of situation. I'm trying to think, any other pros? Art's good, um, at least on the counters. I like it. It's very simple. Everything, numbers are super easy to read. I mean, I have good eyesight, so it doesn't really matter. But for someone who maybe struggles with eyesight a little bit, you can read these numbers across the board super easy. Um, some cons. Have the theme <laughs> seems pretty pasted on. Um, it's, it's, it works, but at the same time, the theme could be a lot of different things. And I think you could have basically the exact same gameplay. Um, a true war game is going to be the system is tailored to that game and that battle. Um, you're going to have, you know, unit strengths that are variable based on that maybe historical unit strength. How did that Panzer army compare to um, the other armies it would be facing? That type of thing, right? Here, it's just numbers on tokens, right? This two naval, why is this a two naval? Is it a certain type of battleship? Is this a certain German battleship? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't say, you know, this, uh, this one... This one tank, how come, you know, this one, this tank's a one and this one's a two. Is it, is this two led by Patton? Is this one of Patton's armies? And this one's led by a much less accomplished commander or an unnamed commander? I don't know. It doesn't say. You don't know. 
You just, you're playing the tokens with the numbers on them. The numbers of your most advantageous. Generally, you're playing the highest token, highest value token, but at the same time, you might save um, for higher ones for later, depending on what you have available in your reserve. So a little bit of that kind of uh, strategy of playing, but at the same time, the historicalness, there's nothing, right? There's no history here other than it's called World War II in 20 minutes and the place are called Eastern Europe, African Middle East, and you're called the a allies and the opponents called the Axis. Other than that, the theme doesn't really, doesn't really come through in the gameplay, but that's okay. Um, another con would be the map itself. Not really a map, I mean, the board, I guess. If you wanna call it that, you know, it's battle spaces with a track for a cube. So it's literally squares, you place counters on, and then you move a cube. Um, there's no draw to it. Nothing draws your eye per se. Now, as it is, it's well done. Everything stands out really clear. So I gotta give them credit for that. It's just that, you know, and you see, you know, the symbols. Okay, look, oh, look, it's World War II, look, right? You have the German Iron Cross and the, um, whatever this is from, you know, England. So I can't remember, Ally Rondell or whatever. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to distract you. My point is, is that I don't, I don't want to talk bad on the game. It actually is fun and enjoyable. I played it probably, I don't know, a dozen times already. So here's the deal. If I didn't like the game, I would not play it a dozen times. If I didn't like the game, I probably wouldn't even film any videos for it. So I'll give this just to start off. That's why most of my videos are positive, if not all of them. If I'm filming a video for a game, I like it. Um, this one, I just want to come out there that it is, it's really in no way a war game or anything like that, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. It's a very simple, um, like strategy game, quick playing. I would like to play with an opponent, a live opponent as well as a, but I will say that if you're just, if you don't have a live opponent or if you want a game, you can do both live opponent and against a bot. This one does very well with the bot and the solo rules. Yes, there's a flow chart. Yes, I'm sure when you're watching on the video, it seems a little more awkward of, you know, following down this. And I'm, I'm saying things telling you guys, oh, can you check this, check that, check that. And you might say, what is it again? Th that doesn't really matter. That's just the presentation of the bot coming across um, as I describe it and as I'm playing. In reality, as you're playing, as soon as you get through one, maybe two games, you're going to have this down. And yeah, you're still going to reference it. You're still going to look at it but it's gonna be super easy to get a, a good idea of what to actually do for the for the AI bot. So, final thoughts, uh, good game, I enjoy it. Um, I recommend it for anyone who, you know, just don't go in thinking any sort of serious, you know, World War II in 20 minutes. I mean, uh, strategy game in 20 minutes, cool. Boom, done, sold, you sold me. Um, I know it's pretty popular, I think the game is technically sold out right now, speaking of so sold. But uh, it's worth waiting for, it's worth buying. I wouldn't go out and pay, you know, aftermarket prices super high, but I definitely think it's worth picking up um, if you like this type of game, or like a quick playing strategy game. So that is Blitzkrieg. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my playthrough. And until next time, later.